I like it. That's cool. <laughs> I'm really pleased with that. That's like an art piece. I like it. That is neat looking. <laughs> I'm pleased with that. I think everybody should have their little thinking hole. Do you guys have a dog like that that takes their food and tries to bury it under your pillow in your bed? We're in the afternoon now. I'm six hours into my 24 hours underground. Well, you can see it's getting dark out there. It's uh, still thundering. I can hear it off in the distance. I don't know if we're getting any rain yet. <laughs> it's daylight. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back. Today is a special day. It's a special day because I'm up extra early because my plan today is to spend 24 hours in the spider hole. Now, you're probably thinking that's not a big deal, but the problem is, is there's nothing really down there to make it comfortable. So the plan today is to make it comfortable. If you guys are just joining us and you haven't seen the previous two videos, the link will be in the description below. You can check those out. There's the original build of the spider hole and then there's the expansion of the spider hole to make a big giant underground massive room so you guys can check those out uh, but today we're going to do 24 hours in the spider hole i've got a little bit of housekeeping to do top side before we actually get in that's why i'm up so early it's about mm, seven o'clock right now i've got about a, an hour worth of work to do on top side sourced all my material my plan is to get it down the hole and have everything kind of in the hole so i don't have to come up for 24 hours starting this morning at 8 a.m. and I'm going to last, hopefully, until the following 8 a.m. the following day. I think I have enough provisions. I think I have enough material. I think I have enough things to keep myself busy for the durations of the 24 hours. So let's get started. hollowed out tree stump is going to be my fresh air intake it doesn't look out of place in the forest because it is a tree stump so I've got a little off uh, a little off centered in order for it not to be directly straight down so the rain doesn't just kind of shoot down there you want to come down bean come on you come down after okay but I also have a um, cellular booster antenna I'm going to stick in here because uh, underground you don't get any cell service. <sighs> Gotta get my arm in. Come on into the hole. All right, well, it's not the most organized hole, but you'll have to do. Bean's already down here. Hey, Bean, what do you think? It's nice and cool. I've got, I think, everything I need to get myself sorted here. I'm gonna focus on uh, getting my bed set up and uh, and cutting my hole for my vent. And then once I get that sort of set up, I'll be able to put all my junk, my stuff, stuff that's over here underneath the bed, kind of as storage. Because uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's not the easiest to work in kind of confined space with uh, all your stuff kind of just laying around. So let's get things sorted out. Okay, it's air vent time. Bean is going to help me cut the air vent in this little area here. I didn't cut it before because I didn't know exactly the height it's going to be. I've got my tin snips. I'm going to attempt to cut a hole and then fold the tin open and that'll allow kind of a natural draft cycle to uh, to occur. And if it doesn't work, I'll put a fan there. Before I got down here, I did some little planning. I tried to pre-cut everything I possibly could because I really don't want to be cutting down here. The ventilation is not great and inhaling sawdust is not great either. So I've pre-cut everything and uh, hopefully it fits or I'm going to be using the old Armstrong saw. That took longer than I thought it was going to take. I, as it turns out, everything's crooked down here. I had to cut nearly every single one. But the uh, bed's made. I can't move down here. Speaking of moving, these are moving blankets. And they work really good as mattress pads. I made this just for you. Yes. What do you think? Play down. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Where'd you go, Bean? Come on. Come on. Out. Emergency calls only. <laughs> I gotta hook up the cell booster. Bean, what do you think of this? What do you think of the bed? Yes. This is your favorite spot on a bed. Yeah. You want to go sleep? You want to go sleep now? Yes. Oh, onward. Build something else. 
Now that I got my bed set up, I think it's a great idea to hook up my communications. By communications, I mean cellular booster. I don't have any sort of uh, connection to the outside down here. And that's partially a good thing and partially a bad thing because if anything were to occur, um, there's no real way to call for help. So what I've done is I've hooked up uh, a cell booster and I've got it hooked up to my EcoFlow. So I've got, uh, so the antenna that I ran down the, the ductwork pops out of the duct and I've got it connected to this booster pack here, which gives me LTE service underground, which is really neat. I think one of the worst things about working in such a confined space is trying to find a spot to put everything. It's always, half the battle is organizing stuff. Anytime I'm doing a job in someone else's home, it's always dealing with their stuff. So my tip today is if you're getting work done in your house, clear the area completely. If you think, well, you know, they'll just work around that table. They're gonna use that table as a workbench. Move it out of the space. If you, if you can, just make it blank slate for them. Well, as it turns out, the uh, nature has called sooner than later. I don't have that set up yet. My plan was to take this bucket and sink it into the ground, kind of behind this little shelf here area. And this was gonna be my, uh, my number one and number two business bucket. And uh, the plan was to take, or is, to take a plastic bag, a garbage bag, and at a later date, probably some sawdust. And what you do is you take your bag and you line your bucket. Because the last thing you want to do with any kind of washroom is uh, sure you're on the ground and ensure if you pee on the ground, it'll just kind of disappear. But uh, that smell never goes away. I'll tell you a story. There was uh, back in new construction, there was uh, there was a job I was on and the uh, I'm not sure which trades it was, but they were they were peeing in the in the root cellar which is usually a, like an unfinished floor underneath like the stoop of a house. And they would go there and they'd pee in it. And uh, so anyways, it was cold, it was winter time. No one was the wiser. Anyways, they came and finished the house in the spring. They poured the concrete in the root cellar of this house and uh, new homers moved in midsummer and was like, what's that smell? And as it turns out, the, uh, the urine had uh, permeated up through the concrete throughout the entire house. They had to actually chip out the four inches of concrete that was in there and remove everything and uh, like excavate the soil. To, like it was, it was just a disaster. The number one and number two, this is the, uh, this is the solution for that. And it's like I said, it's gonna be buried over there. Just excuse me while I, uh, while I pee in this bucket. And if you drank too much coffee and it smells like coffee, you take this and you just kind of Fold it up like that until you need it again. Whoo! I got some more bed boards, so I figured why not more shells? Oh no, we got a leak. That's not cool. Well, I guess that's how she lives now. I've been meaning to replace this guy because it's uh, old. I, I can't even remember when it was purchased, but I believe we had it when I was a child. So it's probably got to be more than 20 years old. Um, I was checking out over on uh, Cabela Bass Pro Shops. They have the GSI Water Cube. And I'm a pretty big fan of those guys because you can replace them. They're kind of inexpensive. I think they're like $10. I think when you're dealing with water, you kind of better be safe than sorry. And especially in this case, it's this one's leaking. So I'll probably end up picking up a couple of those guys just to kind of store down here. much but you know what we made it ourselves the old fresh bread egg sandwich 
Anytime you get fresh bread and some fresh eggs, you don't even have to toast the bread. It's just delicious. It's probably lava, but shipping. He's like, I want some and an egg roll. I don't know if that's appealing to some. It's kind of tasty. It's crunchy. It's it's uh, it's like a little cookie cracker thing, and it. It look like it looks like there's cheese in there. It's good. Don't make a mess on my shoot, you won't eat it. Nope, she's not a big fan of the egg roll. I'm saving my my coffee for my afternoon coffee. It's about noon. Although I can't really tell. We're quiet down here. It's gone up in temp, it's 57.9 degrees. The longer you're doing something, it's nice and uh it's nice and refreshing. Yeah, so we got some pretty good progress so far. We've got the bed set up. So if we decide we just want to go to sleep, we can, which is always most important whenever you're setting up camp, get the bed set up first. It's also important if you're, uh, if you're moving, always first thing you install is your bed. So when you want to quit, you just quit and go to sleep. All right, let's get going. Next project. This video is sponsored by EcoFlow. Now you guys may know that EcoFlow is one of my favorite products. I have EcoFlows in pretty much every building I build. Now, EcoFlow has stepped up their game with their new modular system, which is a sort of a turnkey solution to solar powering your off-grid or your van or your RV, even a tiny off-grid house. I want to give you guys a little bit of a tour to show you guys just how easy it is to set up your very own solar collection system. This is the EcoFlow modular system. By modular, I mean it comes with all different parts that you need to set up your very own solar collection system. Let's start with this guy right here. This is the EcoFlow power hub. And what's great about this thing is it's the central brain unit of the, of the system. It has three ports for your solar collection. You got port one, two, and three. And then it also has three ports for battery storage banks. Currently, I have two batteries hooked up. I have a total of four kilowatt hours worth of batteries. You can go up to 15 kilowatt hours. It also has a port here. Maybe the sun's not shining. You need to charge up your system. What you can use is, is the smart generator port. EcoFlow has a smart gasoline generator. It also has AC in. Say if this thing was portable and uh, you say you were driving a van or your camper and you had shore power, you can actually plug it into line voltage and that'll top up your batteries as well. It also has your AC out port, so if you want to connect directly to the system, that's how I currently have the cube powered, is I have it plugged into this port right here. There's other options over here for DC out. So if you run in your camper and you have your DC lighting and your DC appliances, you can connect them here. You can also connect your AC out to its own disconnect panel, with like a, sort of like a pony panel, so you can have your system run that way. The other neat thing about this system is that it's all controlled by this thing. I call it like the thermostat. It's, it, it looks like a thermostat, but it tells you everything you need to know about your system from the input voltage, the input wattage that you're getting from your solar panels, how much your batteries have left in them and the output that your system is currently using. And what's also cool about this is that you can log in through your smartphone. Say you forgot your van lights on and you're draining your batteries and you're away from your van, you can log on to the app and you can actually shut it off from the app. Another great thing about the EcoFlow's modular system is it's scalable. Say you need to start off with two kilowatt hours worth of storage. You can do that and then you can add a secondary battery. You can go to four kilowatts and then you can scale it up as your demand increases. Out here I have vertical mounted solar panels. I got two 100 watt panels and that allows me to catch my morning sun when it's low on the horizon. I end up collecting a lot of juice that way. A big thank you to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video and for being a longtime sponsor of my video. So if you guys are looking for a very easy, no hassle solution to off-grid power, visit their link in the description below and check out their modular systems. Well, as much as I like having a dangly light bulb in the ceiling, I think I can do a little bit better than that. So I have a plan which involves an old oh, wire spool and my thoughts are, am I going to put it up on the ceiling and kind of give myself two types of light? One with a uh, kind of an ambient glow and the other one has three kind of pot lights, which gives me, would give me lots of light, but also can be dimmed. 
My plan is to get this thing done before dinner time. We're in the afternoon now. I'm six hours into my 24 hours underground. I find it best to keep busy. Well, here goes nothing. Get that guy down. The plan is to lift it above my head and secure it right the center of the room right there. Huh. If I was a little bit taller. One fail swoop. Oh, I don't think so. How'd you hurt your back, Kevin? Oh, I don't know. What about a shovel? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna try to set the spool on the top of the rake and then jam the spool up on the ceiling. That sounds like it'll work. Now what? Maybe if I screw the rake to the thing. Uh. All right, rake is screwed to the top. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Tall enough? How'd you get squashed by a giant cylinder, Kevin? I don't know. That's where it's gonna live, I think. You're gonna stay there? Ah. What do you think, Bean? You want some coffee? Yes. You don't want coffee. You want a treat. You want a treat? Yes. You want a treat? Well, how about I get a coffee first and I'll get you a treat, okay? All right, sit then. Sit. I think it's thundering out. I think we're in for a rainstorm. I don't know how waterproof this thing is. Well, you can see it's getting dark out there. It's uh, still thundering. I can hear it off in the distance. I don't know if we're getting any rain yet. I'm not going to peek my head up. Just checking. I don't see any water down here. So, so far so good. I don't know if you could... Well, I guess if you had to. I was thinking post-apocalyptic living in the ground. I think if you kept yourself busy, like if you just kept expanding your tunnel, I'd be like, you know what, today we're digging five feet that away. I don't know where you put the dirt, but because you'd have to get it, move it somehow, like get rid of it. If you had to stay like in the hole for, you know, months at a time for the radiation to kind of go away. I don't know. I just, I, I think you could, you know, stay, you'd probably occupy your time with you know I don't know collecting rocks or something or polishing rocks or making sand castles I guess if you got everything set up beforehand you know you have your collection of DVDs maybe that's something I actually I, I should have brought which is uh, a DVD player with my uh, my collection of DVDs as it turns out there is a uh, good cellular service down here the wife was just calling me to uh, to see how I was doing. She was checking in to see if uh, I'm okay. So it, it works good. Yeah. What was I saying about the, uh, about the DVD collection? I actually ended up uh, doing a uh, rental clean out and in the basement, the previous uh, tenant decided to just leave all their DVDs there. They just kind of chucked them. I guess they want to pay for streaming services forever. Um, so I just took them and uh, I took all the cases and I chucked them and I put them in a binder and I've got I don't know 500 something DVDs. End of times I think is going to be extremely boring and I don't know 
if everybody realizes that, that uh, modern life has made has made it so people aren't bored anymore. There's never boredom. It's always go, 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 do, do, do something. You know, it's, there's not like when, when I was a, co a child, you know, on a summer day, you'd sit around and you'd, you'd be like, what are we going to do today? And, and there was no internet. There was no, like even TV, like there's four channels or something like that. You had to entertain yourself. You had to go do something. You need boredom. You need, you need that time to just kind of, you know, think or even like, don't think just stare at the wall i don't know you, you know that's how that's how things i think happen is is the thought process not by consuming mindless junk all the time i think everybody should have their little thinking hole do you guys have a dog like that that takes their food and tries to bury it under your pillow in your bed she just licks it to soften it up and then she eats it all right we're ready to try the lights let's see if uh the glow does the glow work <gasps> look at that glowiness that's pretty cool. You can change the color. <gasps> That's freaky looking. That's crazy. Look at that. Can you see that? <laughs> what about green? Green? Blue. That's blue. Can't see. Oh, I can change all the colors. That's neat. That's really cool. I like it. And then when you this is the the ambient the ambient glow and then you can turn the lights on whoa and that's on the dimmest setting there if you want to operate in this room <laughs> it's daylight it's also got that warm that warm glow too which is the uh the 3000 calvin i don't like the uh the uh other light what's the 4000 calvin that's more like a doctor's office this is more like a mimics more like daylight i guess 4000 calvin is daylight but uh, 3000 calvin's closer to candlelight i like it that's cool <laughs> i'm really pleased with that that's like an art piece i like it that is neat looking <laughs> i'm pleased with all right now that we got lighting out of the way i want to deal with entertainment and my thoughts originally were to put the TV over here on top of this guy, but I'm gonna actually take this thing apart because I it's I don't want it jutting into the room. It serves no purpose anymore. It uh, originally was serving to uh, keep the tunnel from collapsing, so this little jut out is no longer required. I'm probably gonna take it back a couple of boards, at least three boards. Well, I think I'm gonna celebrate my successes with a cup of coffee because that was insane. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break before I hook up the rest of it. Oh, got my little Pizzetti. I think it's a Pizzetti. It's like an espresso maker. I think the wife got it at home since everybody asks about this thing. It's uh, it's like a one cup espresso, espresso, espresso maker. And uh, you basically fill the bottom up with water, just like that. I think this little fill hole to the side, you fill this little cup up with coffee, so like that. All I know is I like, I like my three o'clock coffee. So there we go. So we got our coffee in there, put that on top of there. And then you screw the lid. And in this case, we put it on the induction range and we turn it up and we got coffee very soon. There's so much more room for activities now. Look how much extra room I got. I got like over here and over here. I'm pretty excited about that uh, extra room. I can get all the way to the wall, which my bathroom is going to go right there. I just got to dig that out and uh, yeah, we're just moving right along. Bean, what do you think? Beans settling right in there. I got my TV set up. That's important to keep myself busy underground. I've got my Roku box and what I'm gonna do with that guy is tether it to my phone. And then I'm gonna use the cell booster in order to get internet down here. 
and that's going to allow me to watch pretty much the entire content of the human race. Um, I've got some business to attend to, primarily my uh, toilet. What I want to do is actually sink it in the ground over there because uh, it's, well, it's a bucket of a bucket of pee right now and uh, I don't really want to accidentally kick it over and that would just be more of a mess. I've been hearing thunder so I don't know if we're gonna get a rainstorm and I don't know how this is going to uh, react underground. I've got far enough underground and there's enough gravel and, and there's enough waterproofing up top. By waterproofing I mean logs that are gonna prevent the water from coming down so I, I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna that's gonna pan out. Hopefully I don't uh, I don't wake up to water coming through the ceiling because that would suck. In the spirit of adventure, I'm staying underground. So I'm going to dig a hole in my hole for my toilet. 10 minutes of digging, not bad. Ran into a big rock near the bottom and it, uh, it didn't want to move. So I just kind of chipped it in half, which is, I guess the bonus of having the chipping hammer, but it's gotten, it's gotten hot in here. So I'm, I'm getting hot in here, which it's really cool what I found down there is because I, I broke through the gravel layer and I'm into like, it feels like beach sand. Like look, take a look at this. Take a look at this. It looks like, it's like sand you would find at the beach. That's pretty cool. You can see the water kind of coming in. It's ever so slowly percolating up through there. That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll try to dig a little further. It'd be cool to have a water hole down here. Inadvertently dug a well. Focus, why won't you focus? It's like, I want to dig further. Like it's just, it's, it's just really easy digging. It's just... Well, there's a slight change of plans. Well, my original plan was to put my toilet down there, but uh, if I've got a source of fresh water in my bunker, um, yeah, I'm not going to put my toilet there. Uh, I think my toilet's going to be uh, wall mounted and uh, not go in my watering hole because uh, that's cool. I got to dig. I'm going to dig down a little bit more to see if I can actually get the base of that thing to fill up with water. The wife packed me a dinner. She's like, I'm sure you can do that. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I have pretty limited uh, experience cooking. It's always an adventure when I'm cooking. She's giving me a uh, skillet meals. That's, that's not really a skillet. That's a frying pan. Meal for four. Well, I guess if you get stuck down here, you got uh, you got enough food for a while. Remove sauce from pouch before cooking. Did they really have to put that in there? All of the major food groups. We got starches and we got protein and we got vegetables. It's got it's all in there. Let's just try it. That's good. That's good. I'm su I'm surprised. Let's try a piece of chicken. I think that's chicken. That's surprisingly good. Got my TV all hooked up and it's all tethered. I got my phone over here with my uh, cell booster. I'm getting relatively fast download, terrible upload. I got like 65 megabits per second download, like less than two megabits per second upload. So I guess you couldn't upload a video from here, but you could certainly download it. So I've got, uh, I've got my brother's uh, channel here. These are the Wooded Beardsmen and um, well, I can play it because I won't get uh, copyright infringed. Any other video that I play that uh, I'll, uh, I probably can't even play that ad. Let's skip ads. Oh, look, there's me. How am I on this video? <laughs> anyway, I highly recommend those meals in a, in a pinch. Well, not even in a pinch. If you're just like looking for something to eat, that's pretty good. That those Swanson meals are pretty, they're, they're decent. Not much left to do other than complete my task, which is my 24 hours underground. I always forget my pillow. I'm gonna use my shorts. I'm gonna use my shorts as my pillow. Hey, Queen. You wanna come in? Come on. This light's off. Which light? It's convenient for that, right? Hey, Bean, you gotta get. Are you gonna be my pillow? Because I don't know if it's still raining outside. Bean tends to get really cuddly when there's a thunderstorm. Hey, Bean? What do you think? Yeah. Maybe it was dripping on her. I don't know. I can see. There's a little bit of condensation over there, but I don't know if it's leaking through or not. 
Alright, can I be? I killed your phone! Well, good morning. Good morning. It was one of the more comfortable places I've slept. Like, I, if I chalk this place up to, like, a luxury hotel with noise running down the hall all night, or this place, I would probably stay this place. I would definitely, like, mind you, they have a shower and a bathroom. This, this place for quietness. I don't know how they don't make hotels quiet. You shouldn't hear people in the hallway closing doors and stuff like that. They should, they should focus more on, on uh, making the hotels quiet from the outside. Like, like have an exterior door like you have in your house from the hallway. So you don't have donkeys walking down the hallway. I think I need my coffee before I turn into a cranky reminiscing about the loud stays at the hotels. She, uh, I think she crept up the hallway and I think she peed in the, uh, just at the entrance of the hole. <laughs> Hopefully she didn't, uh, poop over there. But if you want to see why I didn't turn the overhead lights on right in the morning, look at, watch this. Ah, it's bright in here. Ah. Caffeine doesn't get you, the sugar still sure does. Come on, Bean. You coming? Come on. Oh, let me get out. Oh, all right. All right, Bean.